Wish you all the best. May 2002, Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld testifies before a U.S. Senate Defense Subcommittee. One of the programs the department is pursuing is a revitalized effort to test and develop ballistic missile defenses capable of defending the U.S., our friends and allies. On September 11th, terrorists took commercial jetliners and turned them into missiles, killing thousands. Let there be no doubt, it is only a matter of time before terrorist states, armed with weapons of mass destruction, develop the capability to deliver those weapons to U.S. cities, giving them the ability to try to hold America hostage to nuclear blackmail. With the power and reach of weapons today, we have little margin for error, and we need defenses that can deter and defend against such attacks. The Missile Defense Agency, MDA, is conducting part of our national response against this threat, directing the testing of a variety of ballistic missile defense systems designed to provide a layered defense for the United States and its friends. A sea-based mid-course defense element is part of the current testing phase. To ensure its success, MDA is directing a team of experienced government Navy and industry professionals charged with testing and developing this missile defense system. With four at-sea missile tests successfully completed, including the last test, FM2, in January 2002, where the first at-sea firing and intercept of a missile occurred in space, the team and test ship joined together again to prepare for their fifth test and show they can do it again. A defensive sea-based system against ballistic missile attack has been developed, undergone testing, and been evolving since the early 1990s. It's built upon proven technologies in the Aegis weapon system and standard missile. Lockheed Martin, who developed and manufactures Aegis, is the combat system engineering agent for the Navy's Program Executive Office for Theater Surface Combatants and coordinates all activities across the FM-3 Navy industry team for the ALI tests. The standard missile is built by Raytheon and is designed for use against short and medium range threats. Testing now centers around a series of nine Aegis Leap lightweight exo-atmospheric projectile intercept or ALI flight missions conducted off the Hawaiian coast on the Pacific Missile Test Range. The current flight mission, FM-3, flies essentially the same profile as the previous test. The big difference, the test objective. Captain Hammerer of the BMD test ship USS Lake Erie discusses the upcoming test. Well, the, the principal objective of FM-3 is to hit the target. It's uh, that simple. If we can have uh, repetitive successes, I think that will demonstrate conclusively that we have the uh, technology and the capability of being able to intercept uh, a ballistic missile in space. Hit a missile with another missile before it destroys you. There is knowledge, engineering, and plain hard work to make what was considered impossible a reality. More than the technology of the system is the force behind it all, the team. It's a strong team with many heavy hitters and veteran players. All government, civilian, Navy, and contractor pros. Getting ready for the FM3 test event, here are some words from the ALI pros of ballistic missile defense. Development of the Aegis system spans over 30 years. Much of this is being conducted at the Combat System Engineering Development Site, CSEDS, by Lockheed Martin as the Navy's Combat System Engineering Agent in Morristown, New Jersey, including systems integration of all the weapon systems and the command and control computer programs necessary for ballistic missile defense. Martin Bernor, Lockheed Martin's MIAT, Multi-Element Integration and Test Director, talks about the elements of the Aegis weapon system, which are the core of the sea-based missile defense system. Lockheed Martin, Morristown, we developed the Aegis weapon system. We developed the computer programs that make up the Aegis weapon system, which would be the spy element for the radar. We design and develop the command and decision computer program. We design and develop 
the Aegis display system, the ORTS program that goes along with that. All those elements, specifically WCS, CND, SPY, they are the core elements which support the event of the SM3 missile. Engineer Mark Wood from Lockheed Martin on CSEDS and the extensive preparation and analysis that is conducted before the test to ensure mission success. We have a series of tests that we run at, at CSEDS and uh, basically all the testing that we do during WIT is done ahead of time at CSEDS. Uh, we analyze data from the previous mission, so that's one of the first things. As we look at what we did in the past, we spend uh, approximately two months of intense analysis of that data that we've acquired from the mission, and we identify any problems that uh, may have come up or that maybe we weren't even aware of until we did the data analysis. Waterfront Integration Testing, or WIT, is what is happening with the test ship in port and in at sea periods before the actual test event. A lot happens here, and Pat McWhorter, NSWC, Port Wyneme Division, explains it. We have um, a couple of different phases of, of WIT, and, and the first phase obviously is the installation of the gear. There's, there's quite a bit of gear that goes along with the ALI computer program, uh, modifications to the ELS, uh, the inert operational missile, and all the associated test equipment. So all of that stuff has got to be uh, installed. It's got to be then hooked up to the uh, Aegis combat system and checked out. Uh, we run various uh, nominal scenarios, baseline scenarios, and then we run different casualty type scenarios. So all that has to be done before we can start linking with uh, off-ship assets, such as PMRF. As part of the Aegis weapon system, another major component in the sea-based missile defense system is the missile, the new SM-3. Scott Robinson of Raytheon, the SM-3 engineer in charge of these tests, discusses the missile. Raytheon's role is to provide the new missile, to build it and, and uh, test it to the appropriate specifications, and demonstrate that the missile met its performance requirements uh, during the flight test. My primary function is properly integrate the missile with the ship and make sure that, uh, that it's fired in the appropriate manner that we're, we're intending to. The Vertical Launching System, or VLS, is the launching system for the SM-3 missile. Actually, in VLS, you can't see the missile until it's launched because it's contained inside a canister. United Defense's Scott DeGarmo talks about the VLS canister. We are the sole design agent of the canister that houses the SM-3 missile. We manufacture it, we do all the design, everything on that canister. We're also the mechanical design agent for all of the Mark 41 VLS, along with uh, then Lockheed Martin is the uh, prime on that. Our support lies mostly in, in the launcher area. The SM-3 missile needs to know the correct time of day for it to function properly. What provides it is VGI, VLS to GPS integrator, for the test, this responsibility belongs to Lockheed Martin's Dan Coglin. Uh, our role is to set up the VGI, VLS to GPS integrator, and it provides a hot start message to the missile. We set it up prior to, we uh, hook up our maintenance interface files uh, so we can tell what's going on with the system. Uh, during the mission, we monitor what's going on with our system and make calls back to the LCU telling them the quality of the GPS data is. An Aegis Spy-1 radar engineer is at the call of the RSC operator if required. Our Spy Pro is Mike Doyle from Lockheed Martin. Here, he talks about the team aspect of the test. We have a team of people here from all different organizations that's been working together for about four years, and it's pretty much the core, same core group of people. We tested the things together out at CSES before we ever came aboard a ship for the first time. And like I said, we're on our fifth firing. So everybody knows each other well. We're used to sharing information with each other. Everybody likes each other. And uh, in the end, we're all looking for the same mission. So there doesn't seem to be any barriers or roadblocks. It's just one big team, everybody doing their part. And we win the game in the end. NSWC Dahlgren's expert David Breedy controls operations for the shipboard Very Small Aperture Satellite Relay System, VSAT, providing real-time communications between the Aegis Cruiser and PMRF, primarily supporting range safety operations. Simultaneously, the satellite sends engineering data to Lockheed Martin in Moorestown, New Jersey, 
Raytheon in Tucson, Arizona, and others for quick reaction and data analysis capability. The VSET network itself and the capability it provides is brand new. We're bringing sites uh, around the country basically onto the ship while we're performing the tests. Uh, in real time, they're getting data from the missile. And they know exactly what the missile's doing. Say in Tucson, Arizona, while we're shooting out here off the coast of Hawaii, they can see exactly what the missile's doing. Besides CG-70 USS Lake Erie, other Navy ships will participate in the test to collect data used to analyze the results after FM-3 is over. Aboard Aegis Destroyer USS O'Kane, Weapons Officer Lieutenant Dave Gray's job is to link track sensor data from their ship to Lake Erie and also act as one of the data gathering platforms. We're supposed to pick it up 60 seconds into the uh, after launch. Uh, it'll still be in the boost. Uh, before it hits Epigee, we'll, we'll catch it. Um, and we will be tracking it. We'll be putting it into the link so all the other players know that it's up. Uh, we have a good track on it. Um, and we'll just follow it the whole way in, collecting data constantly on, on the target. Rocket launch services of the Ares missile target are provided by Al Lopez, representing Sandia Labs. Our role in the uh, flight mission test is to provide rocket launch services for integration, testing, and launching of the target test vehicle in support of the flight mission test. Finally, representing the Navy and PMS 452 is Dr. Eric Hedlund, who looks at the big picture of all the test data that is gathered and analyzed. I think we are in the initial phases of the, the testing. Uh, FM2 was a significant first step. FM3 will be another significant step. We have a fair amount of data to collect. Uh, the data from this mission has been vital in assessing the closure of the fire control loop. Can we hit a bullet with a bullet in space? To assist in this large and important data gathering effort, an integrated photo documentation team was assembled from government, military, and contractor organizations to make sure all the necessary visual, sensor, and electronic data was captured and stored for each test event. All MDA Navy flight mission testing is supported and conducted from the Pacific Missile Range Facility located on the island of Kauai in Hawaii. PMRF supports a wide variety of training exercises and developmental tests involving space, air, surface and subsurface units. PMRF provides simultaneous real-time tracking information on participants, targets and weapons on 42,000 square miles of sea and airspace during an exercise event. Before FM3 begins, as part of the MDA Navy Management Oversight Process, a Mission Control Panel, or MCP, is held at NSWC Port Wyneme Division, evaluating technical mission aspects to ensure proper program management. On the 14th of June, my intention is to send a signal that we have met the exit criteria for this project. But that means that you all have to pull together as the team that you have become to make sure that the gotchas, the devil, does not get us. Detail, detail, detail. During return from the final whip, an SM-3 missile is loaded into the designated cell of the vertical launching system in preparation for FM-3. In the upcoming video of the test, SM-3 operation throughout its flight is displayed in model form driven by actual real-time missile telemetry data. In addition, missile flight coverage recorded by a variety of sensor systems is shown and identified. On the morning of June 10th, USS Lake Erie CG-70 with its officers, crew and the ALI team depart for the Pacific Missile Test Range. Importantly, all flight mission missile defense tests are executed by the actual officers and crew at their battle stations aboard a deployed Navy combat ship. Some 300 miles off the Hawaiian island of Kauai, on the Pacific Missile Test Range, CG-70 Aegis Cruiser USS Lake Erie awaits the target firing. Back at the Pacific Missile Range facility in Kauai, the test target 
an Ares ballistic missile undergoes final countdown. Ship's force, using the Aegis weapon system, sets up a spy radar search sector for the ballistic missile, preparing for target engagement with their SM-3 missile. Four, three, two, one, march! A combined view of the launch from ground-based cameras, along with a camera mounted on the side of the target, provides a unique perspective as the target climbs above the atmosphere and into space, showing the Earth's curvature. The Aegis weapon system detects the target as it breaks the radar horizon, while it is still in its boost phase at a range of more than 250 miles. As the spy radar transitions to target track, a fire control solution for intercepting the Ares target is quickly calculated by the Aegis weapon system and provided to the operator. During the five minute time period after target detection, the Aegis weapon system continuously updates its fire control solution, while the SPY-1 radar tracks the target before SM-3 launch. The Missile System Supervisor, MSS, selects the missile designated for firing. 15 second countdown, fire authorized. 15, Just prior to launch, 13, the SM-3 missile 12, is initialized 12, with GPS 10, data and 9, also position 8, and velocity 7, data for the target 6, and the missile. 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. Fire authorized. Within seconds, the SPY-1 radar system acquires and tracks the SM-3 missile. Shortly afterwards, the booster burns out and separates. Booster separate. Acceleration commands via spy radar uplink message data are computed by the Aegis weapon system and transmitted to the SM-3 missile, keeping it on a target intercept path. In the upcoming steps of SM-3 flight, three critical events occur. The second stage burns out and separates. The Aegis weapon system provides the missile with both the missiles KW and the target's shoot. position and velocity data. And the missile uses that data to perform the first of two pulse burns. Phase two of place. This first pulse occurs when the missile is in the exo-atmosphere, increasing the missile's velocity and directional control. Missile guidance employs GPS-aided navigation in the third stage. Time duration for coasting is also provided to the SM-3 by the Aegis weapon system. While coasting, the missile performs a pitch maneuver and ejects the nose cone. Nose cone ejects. Next, pulse the second pulse ignition. burn performs the final velocity increase and course correction, placing the missile on a collision course with the target. At completion of the second pulse burn, pulse the third stage burnout. attitude control orients the missile so that it points at the target. Now the kinetic warhead, or KW, separates from the third stage, stabilizes its attitude, points to the line of sight to target, and acquires target's image. Because of spy radar accuracy, the Aegis weapon system is able to put the target dead center in the SM-3's infrared seeker field of view. The square around the target image indicates that the target is now in track and divert guidance has commenced. The kinetic warhead impacts the Ares target. It's a direct target hit for the second time in two tests. Here is a slow motion replay of the target impacted by the KW. This view recorded by the Halo 2 airborne system shows the SM-3's third stage rocket motor or TISRAM is clearly visible. Here is the KW. Traveling downward from the top of the screen is the Ares target. The bright flash is evidence of the KW impacting the target as the TISRAM continues to fly to eventual atmospheric re-entry. Another view after target impact by the KW shows the visible debris after the hit as the target and KW break apart, displayed by sensor data from the Airborne Surveillance Testbed, AST, aircraft. 
In the KWIR Seeker View, the square around the target image indicates that the target is now in track and divert guidance has commenced. Because of spy radar accuracy, the Aegis weapon system is able to put the target dead center in the SM-3's infrared seeker field of view. Target features are clearly visible in the last IR seeker frame received through telemetry prior to impact. MDA, the test community from Hawaii and throughout the country, experience a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment as they witness the test live over the ship's VSAT PMRF video conference link. But the celebration of success is short, with the realization that hard work is only beginning as test data gathered from FM3 for analysis streams into the range facility. Ongoing data analysis of the test results gathered from FM3 will pave the way for the next test in the nine test series. FM4, scheduled for fall 2002. As proved in earlier tests, the precision fire control and guidance accuracy necessary for a ballistic missile intercept is repeatable with the Aegis system. And demonstrated again for the second time, a kinetic warhead impacts and destroys a ballistic missile target in space at long range. Hit the target. The primary test objective for FM-3 is accomplished, showing an SM-3 kinetic warhead can repeatedly intercept a ballistic missile target in conjunction with the Lockheed Martin-developed sea-based Aegis weapon system. Today, the Aegis system performed superbly and flawlessly. It was a most remarkable demonstration of the capacity of the Aegis system to engage ballistic missile targets. With the successful completion of FM-3, the Missile Defense Agency, the Navy, and the test team have much to be proud of. Proud of another job well done and aware of the path ahead, developing an Aegis Sea Shield for defense of our country and friends in a new era of challenge.